now. Okay, so um, so this is what we are going to do next session. However, today we need to do something else, and that is talking about Hermes, the messenger of the gods, and you see him right here. Now, um, one thing I would like to start uh, with is how Homer, uh, the famous Greek writer, in, in his book Odyssey, talks about Hermes and how Hermes is described for the audiences of this book. Now, but before I do this, I just want you to keep in mind that the identity of Homer, this famous poet, is not really clear. So a lot of people believe that Homer was actually a group of people, not just one person, a group of people who throughout the years um, kind of compiled, aggregated, collected the stories of the Trojan War. And so Homer is not just one single person. There are other historians who believe that, no, Homer was actually a, a, a single person who wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. So I just want you to keep in mind that the identity of Homer is not really clear. We will talk about him in, in, in a few weeks when we talk about the Greek saga, the Trojan War. Uh, in that session, we will talk about Homer uh, in greater details. However, Homer describes Hermes, the messenger of the gods, like this. The messenger, the slayer of Argos. Then this is important here. So we know that Hermes is the messenger of the gods. The messenger of Zeus, the messenger of Hades, the god of the underworld. So whenever Zeus wants to send a message to someone, he asks Hermes to deliver the message. Or whenever Hades, the god of the underworld, wants to send a message to the Olympian gods, Hermes does that. He's also the slayer of Argus. So, so just pay attention to this, what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm including a name here, Argus, but I'm sure that you don't know who Argus was, okay? I have to explain it to you, and you have to do it in your lectures. If you introduce a new name in your lecture, talk about it. Tell me who Argus was. Tell me who Pan was. Tell me who somebody was, okay? So, who was Argus? Now, Argus was a mythological creature with 100 eyes. He could see everything and anything. That's why he was called the Panoptes, the all-seeing creature. He could see everything. But why? Why is he important? Now, we know that Zeus was a womanizer. Zeus was sleeping with, you know, all kinds of female. And so, in one case, Zeus fell in love with a, 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 a heifer. Heifer is a, is a female cow. So, the name of the female cow was Io. I-O, so that's the name of the heifer, the mythological I-O, okay? So Zeus fell in love with I-O, the heifer, the female cow, but Zeus's wife, Hera, was angry, and so he didn't want Zeus to pursue her, to, you know, mate with I-O, and so Hera, the queen of the gods, asked Argus, the creature with 100 eyes, to take care of Io so that Zeus could not sleep with Io. Now, of course, Zeus was madly in love with Io, and so he wanted to sleep with Io. He wanted to mate with Io. So what he did is he asked Hermes to play some music for Argus, so that Argus could fall asleep. And so Hermes, who's the inventor of the lyre, Chang, 
alat musiri Chang, who's the uh, inventor of the lyre, started playing some music for Argus, and step by step, all of the eyes of Argus were closed, and he fell asleep. He never slept. But Hermes's music was so soothing, was so calming, was so relaxing that he actually made Argus fall asleep. And after that, he threw some stones and killed Argus. And it, of course, after Argus was killed, Zeus was free to go and mate with the heifer Io. So that's the story of Argus, and uh, he was killed by Hermes. And that's why one of the epithets, epithet means descriptive phrase. One of the epithets for a descriptive phrase for a famous person. One of the epithets of Hermes is slayer or killer of Argus. So that's the story of Argus did not disobey. He immediately put on his feet the beautiful sandals, so he wore beautiful sandals, immortal and golden, which carried him upon the waters and over the boundless earth, swift as a breath of wind. He could move very quickly on the earth. He had some special sandals, and he could move really quickly on the surface of the earth. He took his staff which, with which he uh, enchants the eyes of those whom he wishes and rouses those who slumber. So he also has a staff, a kind of a baton, okay? So something like this. Which he always carries with himself and he also has a helmet. And of course, these are the sandals. So these are some of the physical features of Hermes, the messenger of the gods. Now, let's talk about the birth as well as the childhood of Hermes. So this is the first thing we want to talk about when it comes to Hermes. How can we know about the the birth and the childhood of Hermes in the Homeric hymn to Hermes. I talked about the Homeric hymns in the in the videos which I uploaded for you during Nowruz. These works were anonymous. We don't know who the writers were. A hymn is a song of praise. So what is a hymn? A hymn is a song of praise, okay? A song of praise for somebody important. These songs are written, these books are anonymously written to praise the gods of Greece, to praise the Greek gods. And each god has a special hymn dedicated to him. So the Homeric hymn to Hermes, of course, concentrates uh, on the story of how Zeus became the father of Hermes as a result of a union which happened between Zeus and Maya, which was who was one of the Pleiades. She was the daughter of Atlas and Pleon, and so Zeus fell in love with Maya, and of course, the result of this union was Hermes. So this is the Homeric hymn that we have, which discusses the birth of Hermes. I sing about Hermes, the Selenian, slayer of Argus, lord of Mount Selene and Arcadia, rich in flux, the messenger of the gods and bringer of luck, whom Maya, the daughter of Atlas, bore after uniting in love with Zeus. She, in her modesty, shunned the company of the blessed gods and lived in a nearby shadowy cave. So, even though Zeus slept with Maya, and Maya herself was the son of Atlas, she didn't spend time with the gods. No, she wanted to be alone, so she lived in a cave. Here, the son of Cronus used to make love to this nymph of the beautiful hair in the dark of the night. 
without the knowledge of immortal gods and mortal humans, when sweet sleep held white-armed Hera fast. So after Hera would go to sleep, Zeus would run away and sleep with every woman he could find. And so one of these women was Maya, and the result of this mating was Hermes. So hail to you, son of Zeus and Maya. After beginning with you, I shall turn to another hymn. Hail Hermes, guide the giver of grace and other good things. So this is one of the first texts that we have in ancient Greece, which talks about the birth of Hermes. There is another one, there is another hymn, which is more famous, another hymn dedicated to Hermes, which of course, as I said, is more famous. And it talks about the childhood of Hermes. And it talks about how beautiful Hermes was and of course how he was a mischievous child which means that he was a trickster he wanted to play tricks on everyone and he also wanted to you know to do some terrible things which of course the most famous story here is how Hermes steals Apollo's cattle now this story is actually uh, very fascinating for us. We will talk about this clash and fight between Apollo and Hermes in greater detail in the following slides. But let's read this famous Homeric hymn dedicated to um, Hermes. Sing, O muse of the son of Zeus and Maya, lord of Mount Selene, in Arcadia, rich in flux, the messenger of the gods and bringer of luck, whom Maya of the beautiful hair bore after uniting in love with Zeus. She in her modesty shunned the company of the blessed gods and lived within a shadowy cave. Here the son of Cronus joined in love with the Phaeto cave. Let's continue from here. But when the will of Zeus had been accomplished and her tenth month was fixed in the heavens, she brought forth to the light a child, and a remarkable thing was accomplished, for the child whom she bore was devious. This is important. You know, Hermes was not a cute kid who wanted to just play. No, he was devious. He was mischievous. He always wanted to play tricks on everyone around him, even when he was a baby. Winning in his cleverness, a robber, a driver of cattle, a guide of dreams, a spy in the night, a watcher at the door who soon was about to manifest renowned deeds among the immortal gods. Maya bore him on the fourth day of the month. He was born at dawn. By midday, he was playing the lyre. Now, this is one of the fascinating things that happens with Hermes. The fact that he grows up very quickly and he... You know, he was born at dawn, at like, let's say, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning. And then at noon, he was playing the lyre. He had invented the lyre, and he was playing the lyre. The lyre is the musical instrument which I talked to you about. And then in the evening, he stole the cattle of the far-shooting Apollo. So he steals Apollo's cattle, Apollo's cows. We, we are going to talk about this story later on, but... In his on on his first day in this world he invents the liar and of course he steals Apollo's cows on his first day he's just one day old he invents the liar and he steals Apollo's cows after he leaped forth from the immortal limbs of his mother he did not remain lying in a sacred cradle but he sprang up and looked for the cattle of Apollo. Yes. Rahim Maderish ke birun jahid guf man beram ye dozdi anjam bedam. When he crossed the threshold of the high roof cave, he found a tortoise. Ye chis peyda mikone, lag pusht peyda mikone. And then he starts playing with this and then he invents the liar. Now I will tell you how later on. So 
As we said, this hymn tells the story of the birth of Apollo. On this vase, you can see the this is Hermes. This kid here is Hermes, and these are uh, his mother, Maya, and of course, Zeus as well. And these are some cows on this vase. So this is one of the vases from ancient Greece, which depicts the story of the birth of Hermes. Now, this Homeric hymn, it was actually so fascinating and so important for the gods that it was translated by famous people, including Percy Shelley, one of the romantic poets in the in romanticism in in the romantic movement in the early 19th century so this homeric hymn was actually so important that um it was translated later on by a famous romantic poet poet called percy bish shelley okay now let's talk about as i said probably the most important stories that we have about hermes inventing the liar as well as stealing as well as stealing apollo's cattle now the story is very long as you can see there are so many different slides here it's just like like more than 10 slides to talk about uh you know hermes and how he invents the liar and how he steals Apollo's cattle and then later on how he kind of uh, re reconciles with uh, Apollo after talking to Zeus about it. So this is the summary of what I have included for you, okay? Because the text is long and I actually want you to read it because it's a fascinating story. But I'm going to tell you the summary of it very quickly, okay? So this is the summary. Uh, so one of the first things that happens in Hermes' life is that, you know, very quickly after he is born, he starts looking around the cave where uh, his mother was living and then he finds a tortoise and then he starts playing with the tortoise because he likes the tortoise so much so after that uh, he starts uh, collecting some strings and then he puts the strings on the tortoise's shell پس یه سری نخ پیدا میکنه این نخ ها رو وصل میکنه به لاک این لاک پشته یعنی اون کله اینا شو جدا میکنه فقط میمونه این لاکش بعد یه سری نخ بهش اضافه میکنه و یه حالتی پیدا میکنه که این نخ ها به این به اصطلاح لاک لاک پشته میچسبن جوری که وقتی دستش رو روش تکون میده یه صدایی ازش تولید میشه so then uh, he starts uh, so if you look like at the end of it uh, in this part we have the uh, the fact that he found he finds a tortoise and then he tries to uh, put you know uh, the strings on the tortoise and then he starts playing a very very beautiful song on the music musical instrument that he has just created and then he starts singing about Zeus, right? So he starts singing about Zeus, the son of Coronas. He starts singing about Maya. And of course, he talks about how these two people fell in love, had a union, and then uh, he was born. But this is a very important part in this story. This section is important because well, although he invents the lyre, this musical instrument, and although he becomes a very good musical player, suddenly he said that, no, this is not something that I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to do some tricks. And so, just like the thieves, 
And so very quickly after inventing the liar, he comes up with an evil plan to do something terrible. And this is the next stage in our story. So if I want to just zoom in a little, this is the next part of the story that Hermes comes up with a plan to steal something because he says that, well, this music is good, but it's boring. So what I'm going to do is go do something terrible. And what he does is he, he tries to uh, steal Apollo's cows. So he goes to a mountain. So he goes to a mountain and then he sees uh, the mountain of Piera. Uh, and then he sees Apollo's cattle and cows grazing there. And, and so he finds... Uh, you know, he finds some of these cows to be very beautiful and he thinks of stealing them, of course. One of the important things, again, that happens in this part is that he actually, uh, in this part which I have highlighted for you, he actually uh, creates the first one, the first fire with some sticks. ما تا قبل از این آتیش داشتیم ولی مثلا آتیش یه چیزی بود که خدایان در لحظه درست میکردن این نکتهش برامون مهمه که هرمیز تبدیل میشه به اولین موجودی که با دیدین مثلا بعضی چطوری توی طبیعت آتیش درست میکنن چند تا چوب خشک میارن بعد الان یه س... چو... یکی از چوبا رو یکم نکش رو تیز میکنن اینو روی اون چوبای دیگه تکون میدن تا یه شعله ای بالاخره به وجود بیاد و یه آتیشی بگیره so Hermes becomes actually the first person to do this trick and to create fire by using a stick. And then when we go to the next page, uh, he actually tries to steal uh, the, the cows and then takes all of the cows with himself. And then uh, he wants to kind of sacrifice the cows and then later on use the meat for, you know, for eating. Uh, eating, of course, with his mom, and so he he hides some of the cows in a cave. Okay, on his way, when he is trying to hide the cow, an old man sees him. But then he goes to the old man and says, "Please be quiet. Don't tell anyone that you saw me. Uh, and then uh, I will give you some gifts in the future." Now, later on in the story, well, Apollo goes to the pasture to look for his cows. And then when Apollo finds that his cows are missing, he goes looking for them. So, and he also finds the old man that I talked about. And he goes to the old man and says that, have you seen anything? Have you seen some cows? Because I have lost some of my cattle. And then the the old man, of course, tells him that, yes, uh, I, I actually saw a baby stealing your cows. But then, and then he tells him that he went that way. So Apollo goes and looks for uh, the cows in the direction that the old man shows him. And so the old man here tells Apollo what he has seen. But... Something interesting that this god, Hermes, has done is that Hermes has reversed the hoofs of the cows. یعنی یه کاری کرده که سم این گاوها برعکس بشه. حالا چطوری نمیدونیم. یعنی وقتی که گاوا داشتن رو سمشون رو برعکس کرده جوری که وقتی گاوها داشتن رو به جلو میرفتن انگار داشتن رو به عقب میومدن. که میخواسته اپالو رو مثلا گمراه کنه خودش هم که پا روی زمین نمیذاشته یه سری سندل هایی داشته که حالت پرواز پرواز میکرده که خیلی سریع این ورون ور بره چون خب مسنجر هم بوده قرار بوده مسنجر هم بشه حرکت سریع هم داشته مثل انسان نبوده که قدم بزنه So what he has done is that he has reversed the hoops of the cow So when Apollo looks in the direction that the old man shows him He says that okay well this is a mistake because the old man said that the cows were going in that direction, but the hoofs on the ground 
show that the cows were going in the opposite direction. But of course, later on, he realizes that this might be a trick. And so he goes and looks for the cows. And then suddenly, of course, he remembers that a new child was born. And so he finds Hermes and he starts talking with Hermes here in this part that, oh, child lying in the cradle, inform me about my cattle and be quick or soon the two of us will be at variance and it will not be nice. So he kind of threatens Hermes and says that, uh, you know, tell me where my cattle is, otherwise you're gonna get, you know, punished. However, you know, Hermes says that, well, what you say is actually unlikely and impossible because I was born yesterday, like I was born this morning. I couldn't have stolen your cows. And so Hermes says that, no, I wasn't the one who stole your cows because, well, I'm, I'm just a baby. And so later on, Hermes and Apollo go to Zeus, Zeus being the judge here. Now Zeus becomes the judge in this case. And so Apollo and Hermes tell their stories, tell their respective stories. But then, you know, Zeus, starts laughing because he realizes that Hermes is such a mischievous little child that he has actually decided uh, to, you know, to do some tricks on the great Apollo. So he actually tells them, okay, you know, go figure it out yourself. I'm not going to do anything here. So when, after some time, uh, a reconciliation happens between Hermes and Apollo. So they reconcile and then they become friends. Uh, so, and then Apollo says that, well, you are such a great God. Now, I don't know how you did this. I wonder how a newborn infant could skin some of the cows. Because remember, he killed some of the cows and he put the meat and the fat a way for he and for him and his mom to to eat and so uh, you know here in this case uh, Apollo starts you know liking the kid and then when Apollo as we said who has never heard a beautiful song or melody sees the liar, he asks Hermes, okay, what is this? And then Hermes starts playing the liar, and then Apollo actually falls in love with the sound and, say, and then says, okay, if you want me to forgive you for stealing my cows, you have to teach me the skill of playing the liar, and you have to also give me the liar. And so after this, they kind of reconcile and um, you can continue reading it uh, here in this case. So uh, Hermes and Apollo become kind of friends. And so Hermes gives Apollo the liar, but Apollo says that, okay, I'm afraid that you are going to steal your liar back. So you have to promise me, you have to give me your word that you are not going to steal from me again. And if you promise that, I will make you the most beautiful man and I will ask some poets to write books about you. As Apollo says, I know you are a man of the dozed cows, because you are a man of the dozed cows. And now I am afraid that you are a dozed cow and you are a dozed cow and you are a dozed cow. And I want to give you a dozed cow. که من بتونم رو حرفت حساب کنم و خواهش میکنم قول بده دیگه از من چیزی ندوزدی و منم قول میدم تو رو به شخص مهم می تبدیل کنم و این کل آرزوی هرمس بوده This is all Hermes wanted Because when Hermes was born Well, he said, okay, well, my father is the god of gods And my mother is a nymph So why should I live in a cave? Why should I live in a dark, hidden place like this cave? I want to be like Apollo. I want to be like the other gods because I am a god myself. And I want to live among the gods. So everything that Hermes does 
is because he wants to live like a god. So when Apollo tells him, okay, I'm going to make you a god and I'm going to help you get a good name for yourself. Well, Hermes gives him the... Uh, so Hermes gives Apollo the lyre, and then in return, Apollo promises to make him a great mythological figure. So that's the story between Apollo and Hermes, and how these two become best friends. Now let's talk about the next part, the nature of Hermes, as well as, of course, his worship, how he is worshipped. And then finally, at the end, we will talk about some of his other adventures. So, so far, we have talked about his adventure of killing Argus for Zeus. We talked about his adventure of inventing the lyre and his adventures with Apollo, how he stole Apollo's cattle. And then we will talk about another story about Hermes, which is also very significant for us. So, Based on what we read, what I told you, of course, you have to read the text for yourself. It's a fascinating story. I only gave you a very brief summary, so please read it, okay? So, from what we read, well, Hermes' characteristics and powers are, of course, very evident. He's very fast-moving. He's very cunning. He's a trickster. So, these are all important. So, Greeks have always admired cleverness. So, they always said that the best quality that you can have is cleverness. And obviously, Hermes is the representation of this kind of cleverness. Another important thing that you have to keep in mind is this kind of anthropomorphism. We talked about anthropomorphism, the fact that gods are portrayed like human beings because they resemble human beings. So this is very evident in the story of Hermes, because like he comes out of the womb of a, of a mother, and then he's just like human beings, he's an infant. So anthropomorphism is quite clear in this story. Uh, and he's also considered to be a thief, which is a quality associated with human beings. And of course, he's the patron of the thieves. یکی دیگه از نکاتی که میخوایم بهش اشاره کنیم این لیبرالیسم خیلی شدیدیه که توی داستان هرمیس وجود داره. این انتروپومورفیزم، این انسان نگری که وجود داره. نه تنها اون رو ما به شکل یک دوزن میبینیم که یکی از خصوصیات انسان هاست و نه خدایان. حتی میگه چون من خودم دزدی میکنم و دوست دارم این کار رو من میشم پیترن یا حامی خود حامی سایر دزدان این اون بخش لیبرالشه که میگم دیگه آزادی عمل بیش از حدی که توی داستان هرمیز وجود داره نه تنها خودش دزدی میکنه بلکه به حامی دزده دیگه هم تبدیل میشه یعنی اصلا انگار کار بدی نیستش اوکی Another important quality of Hermes is the trickster. So he tricks everyone, just like Prometheus, who tricked Zeus and stole the fire for the human beings. We will talk about Prometheus next session, of course. And then, of course, there are so many similarities between Hermes and Apollo, uh, because in the story that we discussed, they spend so much time together, and of course, uh, something which is very common between them is the fact that both of them like cows and both of them like cattle. So this is a symbol for the pastoral society of the Greeks. Uh, pastoral, now when you uh, study literary terms and devices, you will learn that we have a literary term called pastoral. Pastoral means when in the literary work the characters are depicted as shepherds. داستان های چوپانی Pastoral از کلمه پستور میاد پستور نه به معنی کشیش و اینها به معنی چوپان خب پس کل آثاری که در زمره آثار پستورال قرار میگیرن مثل پستورال الگی 
داستان هایی هستند که شخصیت های اصلی داستان در به شکل یک چوپان ظاهر میشن اوکی سو دتس ا پاستورال الجی فور اگزامپل ا پاستورال الجی از ا کایند اف لیتریری ورک which depicts the main characters of the story as shepherds. Now, pastoral has different shapes and forms and genres. It can be used for different purposes, of course. And uh, the genre is not important because pastoral talks about the, uh, the content of it. پس وقتی کلمه پستورال رو برای توصیف یک اثر استفاده می کنیم منظور اون محتواست درسته که ژانر به خصوصی هم هست ولی ژانرهای مختلف میتونن پستورال باشن مثلا همون الجی که بهتون گفتم بنویسم براتون پستورال الجی اینجا الجی خودش یک نوع شعره یک نوع شعر غمگین که معمولا بعد از اینکه یه نفر میمیره سروده میشه ولی پستورال یعنی پستورال میشه چه معنی داره مثلا یکی یه چوپان یه دوست چوپان دیگه رو از دست داده پس پستورال که میگی منظورمون ژانر به خصوصی نیست منظور محتواست که شخصیت اصلی نقش چوپان رو داشته باشن که حالا میتونه در ژانرهای مختلف باشه so one of the similarities between Hermes and Apollo is that they both represent this kind of shepherd lifestyle this kind of pastoral society And so, because, well, Hermes was uh, in love with cattle and cows, and so one of uh, his sons, one of the sons of Hermes was called Daphnis, and he was also a shepherd, the Sicilian shepherd. Uh, and so we have this kind of uh, tradition present in Hermes's life. Uh, but Hermes and Apollo are also very... similar when it comes to being handsome and being the representative of a handsome man, handsome masculinity. Of course, the difference between them is that Hermes represents young and boyish qualities, whereas Apollo shows kind of maturity and being mature, handsome, but mature. Now, Hermes is best known as the divine messenger of the gods. He was the messenger of the gods, delivering messages uh, for Zeus and also for Hades. And that's why, you know, he has some uh, features and he has some uh, qualities in his appearance. He always wears a traveler's hat, a kind of hat which was special for travelers. And he also wears some specific sandal which help him move fast. And of course, he also has a wand. Okay, and then there is one element on his wand, and these are two snakes, two snakes which are uh, entwined. Dota namode un asash, I give him un slide yekro negokoni, maulan dota more. در هم تنیده هستن همونطور که اینجا میبینید so two entwined snakes are actually uh, are on his wand now one of the reasons why we have this is because Hermes is sometimes associated as the fertility god but also uh, he's also connected with the underworld so these snakes are connected to the underworld, to the world of the dead. So that's why his wand, uh, there, there are two snakes on the wand. And so, as I said, these are his the most important physical features of Hermes, being very handsome, having a hat, a traveler's hat, having some special sandals, and of course having his wand. Uh, one of the other stories that you have to know about Hermes is that he was a guide for the dead uh, to take them to the underworld. So when somebody died in, in, in Greek mythology, Hermes was the guide for his soul and accompanied his soul to the river Styx. To the underworld, the uh, tafsil. 
صحبت خواهیم کرد توی یه جلسه ولی اینطوری بوده که وقتی یه نفر میمرده هرمیز روحش رو هدایت میکرده به سمت آندرورلد تا میرسیدن به یه رودخانه به اسم رودخانه استیکس اونجا توی رودخانه استیکس یه قایقی بوده که باید مرده ها رو سوار اون قایق میکردن دو تا سکه هم رو چشماشون میذاشتن برای آفر کردن آفر کردن به هم اون به اصطلاح قایقران که اینا رو میبرده و هم به خدای آندرورلد تا اونا رو در دنیای مردگان قبول کنه So, uh, this is also another important aspect of Hermes that you have to know about, that he was the guide for the souls of the dead people to the underworld. Now, finally, the final story that I want you to uh, know about Hermes is the birth of Hermaphroditus. Hermaphroditus was the, uh, was the son of the union between Hermes and Aphrodite. So Hermes and Aphrodite had a relationship, had a union, and a son was born. The name of the son was Hermaphroditus. Now, جاید خودتون لغت Hermaphrodite رو شنیده باشید قبلا که به چه معنیه. امروز ما میخوایم ببینیم ریشه این کلمه به چه معنیه. Hermaphroditus is a person who is both at the same time a man and a woman so a hermaphrodite is a person who has the reproductive organs of both a man and a woman so he's at the same time both of them but where does this come from where does this story come from this is extremely significant now hermes was a very beautiful person was a very handsome person And so Aphrodite, the god of love, fell in love with Hermes. They had a union and the result was a very, very, very handsome son called Hermaphroditus. Now Hermaphroditus, then something happened. So Hermaphroditus was a son, was a boy, was a man, was a male. Now, in Ovid's Metamorphosis, we have the story of Hermaphroditus and a nymph, a naiad called Salmasis. Salmasis was a very, very beautiful uh, nymph and, of course, naiad. Now, this is how the story goes, of course. Now, Salmasis uh, was living in a city which had a beautiful fountain. Salmasis ye bud ke. یه خانم تنبلی بود که خیلی هم خوشگل بود و برخلاف دوستاش که حالا کارهای مختلفی انجام میداده این تنها کاری که دوستاش انجام بده اینه که توی یه چشمه ای که تو شهرشون بود بره آب تنی کنه so, and she was very beautiful, extremely beautiful so one day uh, Salmasis sees a very handsome boy near the fountain and so he tries to No, hide so that he can see the beautiful man go into the fountain and you know bathe that beautiful son was that beautiful man handsome man was hermaphroditus now hermaphroditus takes off his clothes and he goes into the fountain to have some you know to bathe but then salmasis comes out and then uh you know starts uh you know, trying to uh, ask Hermaphroditus if he wants to sleep with her. He wants to have a union with her. And I have included all of this story here for you. I want you to read it completely. But I'm going to again tell you the summary here. So this, the story goes like this. So please read the text itself. It's, a, again, a very nice story. And so Hermaphroditus says, no, I don't want any relationships. I don't want to have a union with you, but then Salmasis, who's also very strong, puts her hands and her body around Hermaphroditus and doesn't allow him to move. Kullan dastu, poshu, hama badane shu mindoze ruye Hermaphroditus, wasa nemi zare tekun bukhore. Hermaphroditus ham dare taqala mikone, talash mikone ke 
فرار کنه از چنگ این دیوونه ای که حالا به سر رایش قرار گرفته And so Salmasis wants to uh, keep Hermaphroditus for himself for herself but then Hermaphroditus doesn't want this and so he wants to run away Now what happens is that Salmasis prays to the gods and he says that please I only have one wish and my only one wish is to be one and the same with Hermaphroditus so that we are never separated یعنی در همون حالی که دست و پاش رو نمیدونم قفل کرده دور گردن و نمیدونم پاهای هرمافرودایتس و نمیذاره فرار کنه یه دعایی میکنه که من تنها یه آرزو دارم خدایان باستانی اونم اینه که هیچ وقتی از این پسر خوشگل جدا نشم و همیشه با اون باشم جوری باشه که ما هیچ وقتی از هم جدا نشیم And so some of the gods realize that this is the only thing that Salmasis wants. And so give her the wish. And suddenly Salmasis and Hermaphroditus become one creature. So Salmasis was a woman, Hermaphroditus was a man, but then after Salmasis' prayer, they become one, one person. They become one creature. And they, at the same time, they have the organs of a woman as well as a man. And that's why nowadays the word hermaphrodite re refers to a person who have the genitalia of both a man and a woman. So that's where the story comes from. And the reason why we are talking about it is because hermaphroditus was the son of Hermes. Now, if you take a look at the name Hermaphroditus, you know that it's a, um, a kind of a combination of Hermes and Aphrodite, Hermaphroditus. So it's Hermes and Aphrodite. The union of these two is Hermaphroditus, who was a handsome man. And then he, after his union with the uh, Salmasis, Uh, of course, we have this creature who is both a man and a woman at the same time. So this is the end of our lectures for today. And these were some of the most important stories about Hermes that I think were necessary for you to know about. And uh, next session, as I said, we will continue talking about Uh, some other mythological figures. We have previously talked about Prometheus, but we are going to talk about him again. This time, some more stories about Prometheus. But then we will also talk about Dionysus, the god of wine and ecstasy, the patron of theater. And then if we, these will be lectures by your friend, uh, Ms. John Dide. Uh, and of course, uh, Miss Shada. And then after their lectures are over, I will give you some extra uh, extra notes. And if we have extra time on our hands, we will. I will also talk about three minor mythological figures called Pan, Echo, and of course Narcissus. So um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask me right now. If you don't have any questions, thank you very much for coming to class. I wish you a very good day and hopefully I'll see you next week. So if you don't have any questions, please feel free to leave the class. Uh, thank you very much and you're welcome, by the way. Thanks. Have a good day, everyone.